see your girl please move closer let us discuss <laughs> by the way you may need a drink for this episode because some of the stories are hard to swallow so you may need to get your drink first of all <laughs> did you hear that after 33 years of research nigeria has developed a technology for the mass production of kilishi <laughs> that is beef jerky I'm not making this up. The Senate grilled the Director General of the Raw Materials Research and Development Council. His name is Professor Hussein Ibrahim. You're welcome, my father. You're welcome to this program. No offense, but I don't know how some people become professors in Nigeria. <laughs> no offense, so I'm just saying, if you're a professor, don't be offended. It's just because of this story. But they were asking to know what this National Raw Material Research and Development Council has been doing for the last 33 years. I guess this is the first time that we are finding out what they are doing and this is what the director said. For now, we have developed a technology to optimize Kilishi production. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, anyway, sorry for laughing. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Sorry, I didn't just want to <laughs> just one minute I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, let me bring myself back. <laughs> They develop technology for mass production of Kilishi, my father and my god, I mean, look at that. After 33 years, Nigerians, congratulations. <laughs> but this is supposed to be like a raw material <laughs> council, you know. Um, so he mentioned other things that they've developed like syrup and starch, but apparently we still have to import these items because according to him, we're still in the pilot stage. We have starch. Starch is uh... so the glucose syrup that you developed, we no longer import it. Ah uh, no, we've not read that stage, ma'am. Sorry? We have, we have not read that stage. What stage is it now? What stage? We have tested them. Okay. The stage we are now is the pilot stage. <laughs> Sorry. So they asked him so they asked him about the research that is already done. They give us the ones you have concluded that manufacturing companies are now using and this is as a result of uh, raw material research and development council. Yes, by 30 years of your research activity, we are still a long, young institution. First of all, he said that they've only been in existence for 30 years, 33 years, so they are still a very young organization. <laughs> I feel young, 33, yes. But to be candid with you, we are making progress. For now, we have developed a technology to optimize killership production. I'm, okay, I'm done. Like for you, I'm done this time around. I told you to get your drink that you will need it. This is, how can you swallow something like that? <laughs> I'm, I'm, okay, let me bring myself back. So, <laughs> you know, the genesis of our problem in Nigeria is appointing incompetent people in positions of power just because they know someone or they know someone at the top position. Did you see the reaction of the two men behind him? But to be candid with you, we are making progress. We have developed a technology to optimize killership production. In case you guys are watching, yes, I heard that. Uh -uh. you didn't even hide it. Eh? Now the sad thing is, these incompetent people don't know anything, yet they're so arrogant. I'm not referring to you, my father. I'm just talking generally, you know, in terms of general, general. What I'm saying, I'm just trying to give a background. Which background? We have read milestone. So we have processed, Kilish process technology. Excuse me. You don't have to play that now. Just when I said they can be arrogant. Sorry, my father, in case you're watching. See what I have to deal with. This is a professor talking. Oh, I need some water. You know, I'll be right back. Is that the success story you are going to tell us after 33 years? Look, there's nothing here. What are you telling us? This, what this agency is just wasting our money. I told you guys that you need your drink. <laughs> I have my water right here. Mm -mm. Mm. Mm, mm. Unfortunately, nothing will happen to this man or his agency. They will still continue to get paid huge amount of money for doing nothing. What does he even mean by technology for mass producing? You know, I thought they deal with material. So what type of material for Kilishi? Is this the meat or the seasoning? I don't know. <laughs> so this is just ridiculous. 33 years of research and we're proud of producing material for Kilishi or technology for Kilishi. I don't know how that works. This is what I will not do. Call it a, I need something stronger like Ethiopian coffee or, or Sudanese tea. Very, very strong. Those things, they are very strong. 
Mm. Mm -mm. Okay, so the story gets even better. How can the chairman of corruption fighters be accused of corruption? Oh, my father and my God. So in Nigeria, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, that's the EFCC, they're the ones that pick up corrupt people. To now hear that their chairman is also allegedly corrupt is a revelation. Huge disclaimer, some Nigerians believe that he's just a victim of witch hunt by corrupt people. They said because he's fighting corruption that it is corruption that is now fighting back. Let me know what you think. <laughs> My father, born in Jare, Alaji, you know, you're welcome to this program. So, in case you're watching, is it true? Please, you need to talk to me, my I'm on speed dial because you know I'm the only one that will defend you in front of everybody. So, before we get into why he was arrested, by the way, this man has been acting chairman since 2015, five years. Forget about everything. How can you be acting anything for five years? How about as in acting five years? Too. Appointed by the president of Gabuari. One tenor of EFCC chairman. Is it not four years? No. So how can you keep somebody as acting for five years? That is corruption right there, Mr. President. Freedom, freedom. In case you're watching, you know, do well. <laughs> You're just doing anyhow, doing whatever you like at Asso Rock. It's okay. You kept somebody as acting for five years. Mr. President, we are watching you on Plasma TV. You keep doing whatever you like. You know, you're just doing us like this, doing us like that. <laughs> is it that you didn't know that your appointee is allegedly corrupt? Or you yourself... Mm, how can I put this in a nice way? Because it's a very long list. You know what my father did? The, the man was accused of so many things. He was accused of lying about exact money recovered in his report to the Ministry of Finance. Basically, the man has been accused of relooting recovered loot. Look at that. Look at that. I said the devil is a liar. He allegedly at one time declared 504 billion naira instead of 539 billion naira that was realized from the sale of some seized assets. Does that mean that the man pocketed 35 billion naira? Jesus, Jesus. He was also accused of insubordination, not respecting court orders, not providing enough evidence for the extradition of former petroleum minister, that is Dezani Madweke, also favoring some investigators called Magu Boys, selling confiscated and seized assets to his friends, and so on and so forth. Keep in mind that in 2016, this man was also accused of stealing EFCC files, <laughs> as well as expensive hair travels, living large, and so on and so forth. And as if that is not enough, Mr. Magu allegedly has more than 380 houses mm. 300 and uh, no, that cannot uh, there must be a typo so 380 how, how is that even possible Esa, kill and visit. what are you doing with the house as, as in same time 380 houses please tell us that is not true guys 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 drink up drink up drink drink something drink, mm, drink something i told you i want ethiopian coffee what part of that did you not get and then he allegedly owns seven ships ships as ships loaded with crude oil. <laughs> okay, that there has to be some kind of exaggeration somewhere in these uh, allegations. Seven ships. Do you know how many containers you can fit in one ship? Seven ships loaded with crude oil and assets worth 37 billion naira. That's 95 million dollars, by the way. It would have been more than 100 million dollars before naira crashed. So, as we speak, the man has been interrogated. Me, I'm hoping that all these things are not true because how can you be fighting corruption if you yourself are corrupt? Meanwhile. Baye, baye, oh. Aurora, bon ore badara aurora, e son o go go, e son a ke o. Obviously, you have a problem, but I don't have your time today. You know, I don't. As I was saying before, Kali Dewo interrupted me. Meanwhile, I talk, um, I talk. Um, Are you done? I talk, um, I talk. Um, me, I talk about Magu. Buhari no green listing N A G U Magu Okay you know, if I should descend on you right now, oh, Nimanto Subulo, oh, Nimanto Subulo, you will not know what fell on you. Seriously, Benny. Ah, exactly what is your problem with a senator? Do you know my life? Uncle, you know, you know, do, that was a very beautiful special number. <laughs> Except that we are talking about something serious here. Can you be serious for one minute? I'm the boss of you. You are not the boss of me. <laughs> anyway, Nigerians, what do you guys think about Al Haji Magu? Do you think that EFCC was compromised all along or corruption is just the one fighting back? Let me know what you guys guys think and speaking of corruption we were still trying to digest uh, Ogamagu's case when we heard that the Niger Delta Development Commission spent 1.5 billion naira that is about four million dollars as relief fund for their staff just to take care of their staff four million dollars Ayele. Ayele, oh, thank you auntie 
By the way, who said that that was how much they spent? The Acting Managing Director, Chief Executive Officer of the Niger Delta Development Commission, Professor Keme Bradikumo Daniel Ponde. Ah, my father. You see, he has to be my father. Of course, another professor. <laughs> Professors, you are just doing us anyhow today, you know. So the Senate decided to probe them after finding out that they've spent 40 billion naira in the last three months without due process. That is more than 100 million dollars. First of all, uh, Senate, please move closer. Why, why wait for them to spend 100 million dollars before probing them? Why didn't you wait for them to spend 1 billion dollars? Eh, eh, baduro as in kile ngo for them to get 100 million dollars. Do you know what the NDDC boss said? The man said that we used it, that we used 1.5 billion to take care of ourselves. We are NDDC, we need to take care of ourselves too. NDDC has about uh, 1,400 and something staff. We decided to pay COVID allowance to every staff of the NDDC. We are NDDC, we we'll take care of ourselves before we can take care of the other people. If we all die because of COVID, Take care of, the intervention. Wow, you see that right there tells you the attitude of many Nigerian officials. They believe that if they serve in any capacity, whether they are at the top or at the bottom, whatever, that they are supposed to enrich themselves from the money entrusted to them at their place of work. This sense of entitlement is so so wrong and it's annoying. We need to take care of ourselves too. Did you hear that? Don't you get paid for what you do, Oga, in case you're watching? Yet you cannot account for 40 billion naira. We paid this. The staff are collecting their monthly salaries. Yes, sir. So on top of that, you we, we, give them more money to we, take care of themselves. Yes, sir. Can you can you imagine? And this same set of people will be the first people to accuse the government of corruption. For youth groups and five million for women groups and those living with disabilities in each senatorial district, which is the 270 million is talking about. And where is the fear of God? According to the man, he said they spent part of that 40 billion naira to buy food and palliatives for youth because of the pandemic and that they fed women and people with disabilities in each senatorial district. We gave um, ECG machines. Um, some states are not even at hemodialysis until we give them. The second aspect was food palliatives which we distributed to all the nine states. And the third aspect had to do with publicity. You can see the billboards everywhere telling people about protection. But I'm like, 40 billion, did you really spend that much money on youth, on women, people with disability? It's a lie. So this is when you expect Niger Delta youth to be on the street. Somebody just claimed to have spent 40 billion naira on you guys. Mm. Did you see this money? Did you see the palliative? Did you see the food? Did you smell this money? If you did not, you need to be on the street protesting. Me, I'm talking my own. You guys don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Moving on to Malawi, ladies and gentlemen, we were just celebrating democracy in Malawi. No be so. Remember, we were talking about how they challenged the, the result of the presidential election last year. They had a rerun recently and the opposition won for the first time in Africa. Opposition won. A man of God became a president, a theology professor and the former president of Malawi Assemblies of God. Only for the man to now start appointing people with family ties as ministers in his cabinet. How can the new labor and health ministers be brother and sister in one country? Kenny Kandodo is the labor minister while his sister Kumbize is the health minister. I said, how about, how about that is like Lai Mohammed in Nigeria and his sister becoming ministers in the same country at the same time. The devil is a liar. <laughs> if that were to happen in Nigeria, would you keep quiet? If my child, if your child loss when do people stay and keep quiet thank you my mother of course they will not keep quiet also in malawi a businessman gospel kazaso was appointed as the information minister and then his sister-in-law agnes Nkoma, was appointed the deputy agriculture minister i said who does that also the president's former running mate that is Sidik mayor he's now the transport minister while his wife his wife is appointed the deputy minister for land i don't know if you guys understand the peripheral level 
of the photosynthesis of what is happening right here. But that is like uh, Minister Chris Ngige in Nigeria and his wife becoming ministers at the same time in the same country. This is not correct. A lot of Malawians feel like these people were not appointed based on competence. Instead, they were appointed based on the monetary support they give the president during the campaign. That is nepotism. And that is something that this same president had criticized the former president for. It's so ridiculous that he also appointed the son of former president Joyce Banda. He appointed her son, Roy Kachale Banda, as the new minister of industry. As in, the most ridiculous thing is, more than 70% of the people that he is appointing into his cabinet are from the central region. That is his political stronghold. And, and that does not speak well. This is not what we are expecting from a preacher president. It's very disappointing, actually. Mr. President, in case you're watching, the whole world is watching you. When you call yourself a Christian, more is expected of you. You promise that it won't be business as usual, yet you are appointing some ministers from the previous government into your cabinet. If a man of God cannot be trusted, who then do we trust? Let me know what you guys think about what is happening in Malawi. You guys not do know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Moving on to Central African Republic, huge shout out to doctors at the Vatican Bambino Gesu Pediatric Hospital for successfully separating conjoined twin girls. Ladies and gentlemen, please meet two-year-old Evina and Prefina. Oh, they're so beautiful. After more than a year of preliminary studies and three difficult operations, the girls are now separated for the first time in two years. And we're so happy for them. The doctors utilized advanced 3D imaging as well as stimulated surgery and the girls underwent three operations. The first one was done in May of 2019, that was last year, and their last procedure was June 5th of this year. That one took 18 hours, and a team of more than 30 doctors and nurses, but it was successful. So it's been a month, and they're thriving, and they're expected to have full recovery. Congratulations to their parents, congratulations to Central African Republic. You guys know not much, guess what? I'm just keeping it real. <music> Moving on to Ivory Coast. So the Prime Minister of Ivory Coast is dead. Very, very sad, right? He actually had a meeting that day at the presidential villa. Nobody knew that death was coming. Uh, his death actually came barely a week after he returned from a two-month medical examination in France. Okay, so sorry to digress, but for how long would African leaders go to their colonial masters to fix them, as in for good health? L like, for real, when will you become independent? And how do you do medical examination or checkup for two months? That is what I don't understand. So no doctor in Ivory Coast could check the man. I mean, we're very sad that he died, but the man had had surgery in 2012, but many people wonder why he had to go for this checkup after the airports had been locked down. This, he went during the lockdown, and why would he stay for two months if he was was just an examination or something else you know what I mean so he's actually the president's candidate for the October presidential election they have their election coming up in October the president or Tara the Ivorian leader had in a recent interview granted to Juna Freak said the new constitution permitted him to do two terms from the year 2020 an opposition coalition has rejected the prospect of a third term for President Alison Watara thank God that he finally said that okay he will run for third term but of course he decided designated the prime minister as the candidate of his party. So basically, you know, saying this will be my successor, <laughs> describing him as his closest political ally for 30 years. And now that the man is dead, the prime minister, there are speculations that the president may want to run for third term. Leaders from Ivory Coast's ruling party agreed at a closed door meeting late Wednesday to press President Alassane Ouattara to seek a third term in October's presidential election. Please do not do that. You know, we're watching you very closely. Whatever happens, they will have an election in October and we'll bring you guys the update. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Moving on to Madagascar, ladies and gentlemen. Did you hear that Madagascar is back under lockdown despite their herbal drink? I said, the devil is still higher. I don't, I don't, I'm confused. As in, what happened? Because this drug has been circulated all over Africa. So why is it not working where it was made? You know, based on official statistics, the number of coronavirus cases in Madagascar has now jumped up by 52% at the beginning of this month. And death rate has risen by 65%. Madagascar now has more than 5,000 cases and 37 deaths, including 
two lawmakers. Two lawmakers are among those who have died. It used to be one death, remember? So as of July 6, the country is now back under lockdown. Only essential businesses are open and they are required to close by 12 p.m. noon. Only one person can come out in a household and that person has to be back by noon. Schools, universities have now been shut down. Remember that their schools were in session and they were giving the students the herbal drink. Marara, nya tito kolo zana mapana pia zanya. So now they shut them down. Churches are also closing. Non-essential travel is prohibited and no less than 500 military personnel were deployed on the streets to enforce the new measures, especially in big cities. Now, as a matter of fact, they are now opening new coronavirus treatment centers because the cases are rising. So what do you guys think happened? Is it that they didn't test the drug well enough? I'm, I'm actually confused because I thought, okay, to be honest, I don't think the drug worked in Nigeria either because we also ordered it in Nigeria and so many African countries ordered it. But we now have more than 30,000 cases in Nigeria. So I don't, I don't think the drug worked in Nigeria. But you know, going forward, and this is just an advice because I also want to see Africa develop the cure. I love everything Africa, anything Africa. But I think we need to do more tests, clinical tests, before announcing a medication to the world so that the world will take us seriously. I think that it's important to get it right, especially before exporting to other countries. I believe in us Africans, you know, we have everything it takes. We have Africans who have been trained in the best schools in the world. They know the process needed to get a medication to the market, including clinical research. And of course we can do this. Otherwise, if we don't do things the proper way, we're playing with human lives because this may lead to death. Remember that we're dealing with a life and death situation in, in this case. Also, I don't think they should have left the schools open until they are 100% sure that the medications work. So, but hopefully they won't give up. Hopefully they will keep trying until they get it right. But it doesn't look like this one that they've been selling is working. And speaking of which, Nigeria is now making its own test kit. Oh, yeah, that is incredible news. It's called RNA Swift Extraction Kit. Making this reduces cost by over 500% as compared to the conventional kit in use. It will be produced in Nigeria, which is a great development and I'm so happy, so excited about this. And according to the Minister of Science and Technology in Nigeria, it is very accurate. So if it is very accurate, like he said, that's a great news. Let me know what you guys think about Madagascar and the herbal drink. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So as usual, I'm always bringing you guys the best deals for your everyday living because I care about you guys, you know? <laughs> it's okay, you can thank me later. <laughs> but I'm so excited to let you know that if you live in the UK, you can now have African groceries delivered to your doorsteps. Oh, shit. And I'm talking about West African food, Nigerian food, Ghanaian food, but not just that, Malaysian food, as well as Filipino foods. Oh, shit. A mixture of ethnic foods delivered to your doorsteps in the United Kingdom. So this applies to you if you live in Ireland, Poland, Germany, France, Spain, Finland, Italy, and all other mainland European countries, they will deliver to your doorstep. All you need to do is visit Ethnic Mix, that is double X, ethnicmix.com. They have everything, mama, okra, shito, goat meat, <laughs> as well as recipes on their website that can help you to cook the food. And as usual, if you use my name, Adiola, as promo code, when you are checking out, they will always give you a 5% discount every time that you buy something. Ben. Not only that, you might want to follow them on Instagram because they have videos, so many videos of how to cook African food, Filipino and Malaysian food, as in. So don't forget to use my name, Adiola, as the promo code. Otherwise, you would lose the 5%. Oh, by the way, whenever you patronize them, you will earn points, which you can now use to purchase other items, you see? And while I'm talking about this, move closer. Do not forget that you can also have groceries delivered to your loved ones in Nigeria through helpmewaka.com. I've been telling you guys, about them for weeks now. I mean, these are some of their deliveries on the doorsteps of your loved ones. In fact, you can set it up with them to be delivering groceries to your parents in Nigeria every single month. You can have that set up with them. And not only that, you can also deliver food to someone in Nigeria anonymously. You can call them and say, I want you to deliver this food anonymously. Once again, with my promo code, that is Adiola, they will give you a $5 discount every single time that you purchase something. So don't forget to check them out. And if you've used the service of help me waka.com leave a comment down below let's know about your experience okay you guys don't be offended by what i'm about to say okay <laughs> 
because I don't want anyone to lose their African accent. Of course not. As you guys can see, I did not lose my own African accent. Why would I even as in ah, irony? <laughs> but if you live in the US or you live in Canada or you're planning to move to the US or Canada and you just want to make sure that when you speak, people understand you. <laughs> like I said, you're not trying to change your accent, but you just want to be heard without people saying, come again, come again, you know? This is not for everybody, but if you're interested in that, so if you're interested in that, please meet my speech coach, that is Katie Lever. Whenever I have a speech somewhere, I call her, I say, help your girl. <laughs> Katie is so nice. She's a certified ESL tutor. She's a language coach specializing in real life American English, accent reduction and presentations. So if you have a presentation, I work and you want to do really well or you are a pastor abroad that wants other people to come to your church not just Africans you want to make sure that you are heard or you are an international student she offers one-on-one -on -one classes via Skype she charges $35 per hour for conventional skill practice and she charges $40 per hour for accent reduction and presentation preparations you can find her on Instagram by the way I follow her as well she has great content on her Instagram page or you can contact her on her website or via email by the way, when she talks about accent reduction, she's not trying to get rid of your accent. She just wants to make sure that when you speak to people that are not familiar with your accent, that they can hear you loud and clear. So make sure that you contact her if you're interested in that. So for some weeks now, some Nigerian viewers have been complaining about the rate of the money transfer company that I advertise for, that is Sendwave. And I passed your complaints to them and I'm really grateful that they explained what's going on. Apparently, the Central Bank of Nigeria, the CBN is the one that controls the conversion rate that money transfer companies can use and so they give them a window so right now the central bank has devalued naira again officially pegging the exchange rate of transfer companies at 382 naira to one dollar so these transfer companies can go lower but they are not allowed to go higher than whatever the central bank set and right now they set it at 382 so these money transfer companies are not allowed to go beyond that set legally in 2016 some some transfer companies went beyond what central bank said and central bank actually closed those companies at that time only western union moneygram and one other company were allowed to send money to nigeria because the other people uh, passed the boundary so the truth is their hands are tied because they don't want to be shut down but they are also aware that at the black market people are getting it for over 400 naira they are aware of what's happening in fact they were thinking about maybe not sending to nigeria right now so that nigerians won't think that they are trying to scam them but i said i will explain what's happening to you guys they don't want to be shut down because they are just starting and they are also fine with people using black market or other means right now to send money but they're hoping that at least you guys will come back to them when naira right again <laughs> so for you to understand right now Western Union set their own exchange rate at 380 plus the transaction fee that you will pay Sendwave is using the maximum rate allowed by central bank which is which is 382 naira plus you don't pay any transaction fee with Sendwave and if you use my name Adola as promo code when you sign up for the first time they will add five dollars to whatever you're sending to your loved ones so if central bank devalues naira again officially you can be rest assured that it will reflect in their exchange rate as well there on top of it although with the rising COVID-19 cases in Nigeria I mean it's okay for you to change money at the black market I'm not trying to force you to use a send wave but honestly this is not the best time to change cash be because of the COVID-19 going on when you can use send wave and the money would land in the person's bank account directly having said that they are aware that you have better options right now and they want me to tell you that they are really sorry but there's nothing they can do at the moment they keep following the guideline of central bank and if this is the first time of you hearing about Sendwave, that is the money transfer company that doesn't charge you anything to send money to your loved ones. You send it on your cell phone like a text message and the person gets it instantly. And if you're just signing up for the first time, don't forget to use my name Madola as promo code so they can add $5 to whatever you're sending to your loved ones. Anyway, you guys now don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So we passed half a million views on our TED Talk. Oh shit! Thank you to everybody that has watched though. By the way, have you guys shared it on your Facebook, your Twitter, and your Instagram? Like seriously, don't just watch this thing. <laughs> Help my market. Help me by sharing it. Eh? <laughs> don't forget that we're working on my bride price going up, you know? <laughs> but honestly, I'm really grateful to everyone that has taken the time to watch that TED Talk. Also, huge shout out to my brother from another mother. That is Laolu Sebanjo, who did the illustration. Thank you so much, brother Laolu. God bless you. We are very grateful. <laughs> 
So thank you so much for watching. And before I sign out, this outfit was given to me by my mother in Texas. This is her Instagram handle. If anybody wants this kind of outfit as well as the one that I wore the other time on my Instagram page, yes, this one. Make sure that you contact her to buy. It's not free. <laughs> All right, y'all. It's been real, and I'm keeping it right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you yet to subscribe, we're waiting for you. What are you waiting for? Listen, it's free. You get free news. You know. <laughs> Please press the subscribe button. Until next time, I'm going to see y'all later. Peace out.